Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard and welcome back to my series I'm doing on building this big bandsaw mill. If this is your first time here, there'll be a link down in the description and up in the cards to a playlist that contains all the videos that bring you up to where we are right now. So one of the last major pieces of work that I have to do is install the tensioner. And I talked about the tensioning systems at the end of the idle wheel video. But again, this is the hydraulic ram, which is gonna force the idle wheel out to tension the blade. Really simple, kind of a quick and dirty way of doing it. I'll probably end up doing something a little more elegant in the future, but I think this will serve me pretty well for the time being. So I have this hydraulic ram that needs to be, that needs to get mounted to the beam somehow and in a way that I'll be able to force this out uh, pretty easily. So what I'm gonna do here is I have a piece of half or a quarter inch steel, which I get welded to the beam just to beef it up a little bit. And then I have this piece of angle, which I go on here and get bolted down to the beam. I'm gonna be bolting this in place so I can remove it later if I wanna do something a little more elegant. I also have this little donut. <laughs> this will go down here and the hydraulic cylinder will fit into here and that'll just kind of help it keep, keep it aligned a little bit. And then on the aisle box, pretty similar thing. I have another piece of heavy gauge angle, which I get bolted to that box. And that's what the ram will actually push against. And the last thing I'm gonna do is in the center somewhere, I'll drill a hole in this uh, piece of rectangular tubing for the ram to pass through. And that'll just help to keep the ram aligned and in position as, as the pressure is being applied. So, more holes. Let's get drilling. <laughs> So I tack this extra plate to the bottom side here. So when I drill all the holes, everything will be aligned. I can take this off of here, bring it over to the beam and continue drilling the holes over there. I don't have to worry about getting all the bolt holes aligned. Now I'm gonna go super overkill here because I have the room and I love drilling and tapping holes. And I'm gonna use eight bolts on this one to hold this um, piece down to the beam. Because you know, why not? I knocked all those off without actually marking the locations. So now I have all the holes drilled, I'll just roughly weld that filler plate to the beam and then I can break the tacks on the angle. Now I can grab the pilot bit for the tap and drill out the holes for the bolts. Does this crooked fan cover bother anybody? Oh, I can't move it. Oh well. Staying crooked. I'm sorry, I tried. So 
So I only have one bolt installed in the idle side right now, and that's why I can make sure I get this angle angled at the right angle so that as it intersects the ram, it's square so that the ram has been pushing on uh, one side or the other is pushing nice and flat into that piece of angle iron. And just by ramming that in there, it looks like it kind of self aligns. That side's still good. So now I can lock down this bolt and drill out and bolt in another uh, bolt hole. Now I can take this thing back in the shop and finish it up. So I have one bolt installed and now I'm just checking it again to make sure that this is aligned correctly. And basically what I'm really doing is making sure that these two faces, the faces that are touching the ram are parallel. So that the ram isn't hitting it either one at an angle, it's nice and flat or straight on to the plate. That looks pretty good, so I'm gonna lock these two bolts down and then I can drill out the rest of the six bolt holes. So next I'm going to start working on this donut thing and right now the ID of this ring is a little bit too big for the outside of the cylinder so I can't fit it in there right now. So last time I used my die grinder a bunch of people suggested I try a rotary file. So that's what I have here, a little rotary file. And I'm just going to try and open this inside up a little bit so that the cylinder fits in there. And the other thing I need to do on this donut is the wall thickness is a little too thick right now. Um, it's going to put the cylinder higher off the beam than I want. I want the cylinder to be about 3 eighths of an inch off the beam, and this is a half inch. So I have to take off roughly a half inch, just to make, or roughly an eighth of an inch, to make a flat spot on here so that the ring doesn't interfere with the mounting position or the mounting height of the cylinder. So we'll see how this goes. Um, back when I uh, replaced my air compressor, I got a smaller one because it takes up less space because I was like, how often do I use tools that use a lot of air? <laughs> we'll see. So the nice thing about that cylinder being painted is that now when I put it into the donut, I can see where the paint is on here and I can focus on those areas with the grinder. And 
There we go. Nice. That's a good fit. Nice. All right. So it's about five degrees Fahrenheit today, and one of the things I've learned through this whole process is the extremely cold temperatures makes tapping holes a little more uh, challenging. <laughs> At the colder temperatures, the cutting fluid doesn't really do anything. It really kind of solidifies. It doesn't really lubricate that well, and the taps themselves become a lot more brittle. So I found that heating the steel with a blowtorch before tapping the hole really helps to keep some heat in the area so that the cutting fluid still works. And the other thing I did was keep the taps inside until I was ready to use them, put the cutting fluid on, bring them outside, and use them as quickly as possible. And that way their core temperature was still pretty warm, and then the steel could keep the cutting area warm as I was tapping the holes. So I know a lot of people have been asking me how many taps I've broken through this whole process or how many taps I've gone through, and I hadn't had any issues with breakage or um, dulling or anything until I started doing them here in the really cold weather. When I use my half inch tap to tap the bolt holes in the beam for my tensioner plate thing, I had a few of the cutter teeth on the tap actually break off. But as long as I do a little bit of prep work with a little bit of heat, it doesn't seem to be too much of an issue. All right, I just went inside for a bit to take a bit of a warm-up break. It is freezing today. I was welding and I couldn't feel my hands anymore and they were so cold that it was like getting painful. So I went inside for a bit. It's, uh, I think it's three degrees today, let me see. It's warmed up a little bit. Five degrees Fahrenheit, ugh. All right, so I gotta finish welding this donut on here and then I'm gonna take this um, brace off and I'll finish welding this plate in here the filler plate and I have a few plug welds in there to weld as well and then the tensioner will be done. Here's a look at the completed mechanism. I've added the hand pump, which allow me to operate the ram. And this does work out really well. The ram has no problem pushing that idle mount out down the beam. And I can tension this thing until I have enough pressure on the blade. 
Um, in the next video, we'll be looking at the whole setup process, and I'll be showing how I was able to figure out how much tension I'm actually putting on the blade uh, versus how much pressure I'm putting on this plate over here. So that's it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about the sawmill or anything back in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking. Stay warm. It's freezing out here.